previous week we have discussed chapter number 2 it's a sexual reproduction in flowering plant we have discussed many of the topics in chapter number 2 sexual reproduction in flowering plants that includes a structure of flower how the gametes male and female gametes are produced by their respective organs like stamen and carpel how the process of formation of gametes takes place means microsporogenesis and megasporogenesis we have also discussed a gamete transfer process means pollination and what are the agents for transfer of this pollen grain what we call it as pollination agents the biotic and abiotic factors that involve in the pollination agents we have also discussed artificial hybridization to achieve our goal we have discussed double fertilization formation of endosperm and formation of embryo have been discussed so now currently we were discussing or we are discussing the post fertilization events and as you know that the post fertilization events are four first the zygote converts to a embryo pen primary endosperm nucleus converts to a endosperm third that seed converts uh, sorry ovule converts to a seed and the ovary converts to one a fruit this is what happens in a post fertilization event from this four we have discussed two how the endosperm is formed from primary endosperm nucleus and we have also discussed how embryo is formed from zygote today we have to see that how the seed is going to be formed and once the seed is going to be formed what is the importance of that seed okay how it is going to be formed and what are the components that is present in the seed and what are their role that we have to discuss okay so we start with a seed seed is the result of fertilization after fertilization seed gets produced so seed gets produced but seed gets produced after which process by process called as fertilization fertilization of what that leads to a production of seed the fertilization of ovule that leads to a production of a seed similarly at the same time there is also formation of a fruit because the seeds are usually present in the fruit you know that the fruit contains the seeds okay so fruit is formed and the fruit contains a seed okay seed is formed from ovule at the same time the fruit is also result of a fertilization and it is produced from ovary so these are the two processes which occur simultaneously and they are going concurrently okay so which two processes occurs concurrently or simultaneously after a fertilization a process of formation of seed from ovule and the process of formation of fruit from ovary both goes simultaneously okay and both are the results of fertilization as you know that seed is present within a fruit okay so that is a seed so that ultimately says that the seed is the ultimate product of fertilization ultimate product which is going to be formed after a fertilization is the seed okay and that is formed from a ovule so you can also call it as what is a seed seed is fertilized ovule what a seed can be called seed is called as fertilized ovule similarly what the fruit is called fruit is called as fertilized ovary so i again repeat the seed is fertilized ovule and the fruit is fertilized ovary clear students so now we go ahead what are the components of a seed once the seed is formed you know that what are the components of a seed usually the seed contains the three components first what it contains it contains protein laden clear second it contain embryonic axils and third it contains seed coat clear so these are the three components of a seed what are the three component of a seed protein laden embryonic axis and seed coat the cotyledon which is present in the seed that is varied in number depends on the type of a seed because we have a two type of a seed one is called as dicot seed or dicotyledonous seed and the second one is called as monocot seed or monocotyledonous seed dicot seed 
Dicotyledonous means the name itself says this. Di means two. Cotyledon. How many cotyledons they have? Two cotyledons. The dicots see have two cotyledons. And the monocot. Mono means one. So they have one or single cotyledon. So the number of cotyledon in the seed may vary depends on the type of a seed, whether it is a dicot seed or monocot seed. You know that dicot seed contains a two cotyledons and the monocot seed that contains a one cotyledon or a single cotyledon. What that cotyledon contains? The cotyledon has a reserve food material. Okay? And that reserve food material, what we can see in the cotyledon. Apart from that, it has an embryonic axis. We have already seen the development of embryo. We have also seen the components of that embryonic axis like hypocotyl and epicotyl. Hypocotyl leads to a development of a root system. Epicotyl that leads to a development of a shoot system. What we have already discussed why during embryo formation in both cases, dicot and monocot plants. Now seed coat. Seed coat means a covering of a seed. Covering of a seed is called as seed coat. Okay, so these are the three usual components which we find in the seed. Which are the cotyledon, embryonic axis, seed coat. Cotyledon may be either two or one, depends on the type of seed, and they are filled with reserve food material. Embryonic axis it contains embryo, epicotyl, hypocotyl. Seed coat it is a covering of a seed and that provides a protection to a the embryo which is present inside it. Okay, so this is called as a seed coat. Okay, so that is the components of a seed. You already know that you have already learned it in the 11th science that there are two types of a seed, and you might have also learned the structures of dicot seed and monocot seed. But what are their other names or how they can also be called as with respect to a sexual reproduction? According to a sexual reproduction, the seed can also be a following two types. First is called as non albuminous seed, and the second one is called as albuminous seed. Clear? This is another type of a classification in which seed are going to be classified into two different types. First is called as non albuminous seed, and the second one is called as an albuminous seed. Okay? Now you know that. Before the embryo formation, there is a process called as an endosperm formation. An endosperm contains a reserve food material that is supplied to a developing embryo. Okay, and that is necessary to endos. That is necessary that the endosperm formation should start first, and then the embryo formation start. Now the developing embryo utilizes the food from the endosperm. Some seeds are such as that they utilizes the whole food which is present in the endosperm. So now the endosperm doesn't have any type of a food. The food doesn't remain, doesn't remain or not remains. It is fully consumed by the seed itself. This type of a seed is called as albuminous seed. And here, the food which is present in the endosperm that is not fully consumed, a partial food or somewhat food that remains within a seed. Okay, and that type of a seed they are called as albuminous seed. Okay, so what is a non-albuminous seed in general? What is called as a non-albuminous seed? The non-albuminous seed that means a seed which contain or sorry, which do not contain, do not contain, which do not contain a reserve food material or the food material which is present in it is fully consumed. This is called as non-albuminous seed. And the albuminous seed it has a somewhat food reserve that remains. It is not fully consumed. This is called as albuminous seed. Which are the examples of non-albuminous seed? Where the food is fully consumed, there is no reserve of food material left. It's called as groundnut, bean, pea. These are the examples of non-albuminous seed. And which are the albuminous seed? The example are castor, where somewhat food remains, coconut. Maize, sunflower, etc. These are called as albuminous seed. Okay. Usually, what we generally cover non-albuminous seed are 
the daikon seed or daikon seeds are usually non albuminous seed where the food is consumed not left and the monocot seeds are albuminous seed where somewhat food is left okay so this is usual classification non albuminous seed and the albuminous seed okay next we have also learned the structure of ovule because this seed is formed from ovule okay so you should know the structure of ovule ovule is oval in shape it is attached with a stalk like portion just try to remember what we have learned this is called as funicle it's attached to a region of a oval uh, that's called as hilum okay there is a one pore this is this pore is called as micropyle okay so there is a two coverings either one or two coverings these two coverings are called as integuments inside the integument there is a presence of mucellus and mucellus contain embryo cell okay mucellus contains a embryo cell now this is gets fertilized this ovule gets fertilized and that results into a seed now we have seen when the embryo cell that embryo cell that's formed into an embryo an endosperm endosperm and the embryo is formed from this part but now what happens to this part mucellus integuments micropyle they are the part of the ovule when it gets fertilized what happens to this part we have discussed regarding this embryo cell in embryo cell when it is gets fertilized that leads to a formation of an endosperm and embryo but what happens to this other parts that we have to discuss in a seed usually you know that mucellus it's a filled with a reservoir material okay while fertilization or while growing usually this mucellus or the food material which is present in the mucellus that is going to be utilized by a embryo cell developing embryo cell but we have a exception of a uh, seeds where the food material which is present in the mucellus that is doesn't fully utilized and you can find a remnant of food in the mucellus remnant or remaining of food you can find into a mucellus okay and that can be observed in black paper and beet clear remember this two example in this two seeds a seeds of black paper and the beet and the remnants of mucellus is found where the somewhat food material gets remain and this type of material is only found in to such kind of a seeds and this after fertilization that's called as perisperm what it is called perisperm so what's a perisperm perisperm means a remnants of food material found in a mucellus this is called as perisperm and it is observed in which case it's observed in to a black paper and the beet this is very important regarding to our examination point of view okay now what happens to this intake that's about the mucellus okay usually mucellus the food which is present in the mucellus that's consumed okay there are few exception where it is not fully consumed and some remnants can be found called as black paper and the beet what we call it as perisperm okay now what happens to this integument integument means it's a covering the covering of a ovule when it gets fertilized that becomes a covering of a seed so integuments that's converts into a seed coat integument is the covering of ovule when ovule gets fertilized that integument cover uh, converts into a seed coat means it becomes a covering of a seed okay what happens to this micropyle the micropyle is a small pore okay which is usually found at the apex that small pore that remains as such while developing or maturing a seed through this small pore the water and the oxygen enters in the seed so when you sow a seed the water and oxygen that enters into a seed through this small pore micropyle okay and that helps in the germination okay so this is a small pore that remains as such on the seed through which the entry of water and oxygen will take place okay so that's all about how the various parts of a ovule gets converted into a various parts of a seed when it gets a fertilized 
when it gets a fertilized clear students okay so i can repeat ovule fertilized converts to a seed ovary gets fertilized converts to a fruit there are two type of a seeds non albuminous seed and albuminous seed in non albuminous seed there is no food all the food is utilized example in case of groundnut bean pea in albuminous some what food that remains that castor coconut base and sunflower different components of it embryo cell that leads to formation of endosperm and embryo now in mucellus usually the food get that is present is usually consumed by the embryo sac but there are exception of a seeds where the food remains or remnants of food can be found in case of black pepper and the bee after fertilization it is called as a perisperm the integument of ovule converts to a seed coat the micropyle a small pore that remains as such through which there is an entry of water and oxygen enters and that helps in the germination of a seed okay now once the seed is going to be formed there are two possibilities it it either germinate or it enters into a dormant stage dormant stage means a inactive stage which we can store it for a long period of a time okay so this is what is usually going to be happen that we will discuss later what happens once the seed gets a mature but one thing once the seed gets mature the water content that is present in the seed that gets reduced during the maturation once the seed is formed now it starts to mature and when it starts to mature and when it becomes a mature the water which is present in the seed that gets evaporated or reduced and so that's why the size of a cell gets a so so size of a seed gets a reduced usually 10 to 15 percentage water which is present in the seed they gets evaporated and reduced and so that's why the mass of a seed also gets a reduced that what happens in the case of a maturation of a seed okay students now once the seed gets a mature it loses the content which is present in it now what is going to happen the seed enter into a dormant stage what we call it as uh, inactive stage and dormant seed it's a inactive stage and that is necessary for the preservation of a seed during the same time when the ovule is converting into a seed now at the same time ovary is also converting into a fruit okay the ovary is converting into a fruit okay the wall of ovary that converts into a pericarp pericarp means a covering of a fruit what we see in the covering of a fruit okay so that the uh, wall of ovary that converts into a pericarp okay so now we will discuss how the fruit is going to be formed or what are the components of a fruit fruit is going to be formed as you know that the formation of a fruit is occurs along the formation of a seed so formation of a fruit this formation of a fruit it occurs along the formation of an seed okay how the fruit is formed the fruit is formed from ovary when ovary gets fertilized it leads to a formation of a fruit and now you already know that the wall of this ovary that gets converted into a pericarp of a fruit and the seeds are present within this fruit seeds are present within this fruit the fruits which are going to be produced are usually a two types first is called as a fleshy fruits and the second one is called as dry fruit what is called as a fleshy fruit fleshy fruit that means the contents of a fruits are fleshy in nature like what we observe in case of mango tomato orange you see the inner component or components of a fruit it's a fleshy in nature okay even you can also consider uh, coconut it's a fleshy okay there are lots of fruits even apple uh, strawberry many where the contain of a fruit they are fleshy in nature such type of a fruit is called as a fleshy fruit if the contain that is not fleshy but it is a dry then this kind of a fruit is called as a dry fruit like for an example it includes mustard or pea 
और डी क्लियर ओके और कंफ्यूज राइट के ओके दे आर द ड्राई फ्रूट्स ओके इवन यू कैन ऑल्सो कंसीडर वीट मेज कैप्सेला लॉट्स ऑफ ओके सो एक्स दे ऑल आर द ड्राई फ्रूट्स ओके सो फ्लैशी फ्रूट्स एंड द ड्राई फ्रूट्स इफ द कंटेंट इज फ्लैशी दैन इज कॉल्ड एज फ्लैशी फ्रूट्स एंड इफ द कंटेंट इज ड्राई दैन इज कॉल्ड एज ड्राई फ्रूट वॉट यू हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न इन द इलेवन साइंस द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ अ फ्रूट सो वी डोंट गो इन अ डिटेल now another type of a classification of a fruit another type of a classification of a fruit so what it is it's called as a true fruit and second is called as false fruit what is true fruit usually know that what is a fruit fruit is fertilized ovary after fertilization the ovary gets converted to a fruit so you can call it as fertilized ovary is called as a fruit this is usual definition of a fruit so if the fruit it develops from a ovary such type of a fruit is called as true fruit and in most of the circumstances this happens but we also have some examples in which the fruit is formed other than ovary it is not formed from ovary but it forms from other pa other parts of a flower but it is not a ovary it's other than ovary then this type of a fruit is called as false fruit okay so what is a true fruit the pro true fruit means it develops from the ovary it is a fertilized ovary and what is called as a false fruit the false fruit it develops from the other parts of a flower but it is not ovary okay so this type of a fruit is called as false fruit like for an example i will give you example of false fruit apple cashew nuts okay so these are the fruits which develop from not ovary they develop from other part and they develop from uh, thallus a part of a flower thallus lower part of a flower from which this fruit is developed so it comes under the category what we call it as false fruit what we call it as false fruit okay so this is two type of a fruits true fruit and the second one is called as a false fruit now but we also have exception usually whatever the case true or false in both cases a process occur what we call it as fertilization here there is a fertile in true fruit there is a fertilization of ovary and in false fruit it is fertilization of some other part but it's other than ovary but ultimate thing whatever it may be there is a process called as fertilization okay but we have a exception also like for an example there are fruits which develops without fertilization remember it's very important the fruits which develop without fertilization they are called as parthenocarpic fruit what it is called as parthenocarpic fruit so what is a parthenocarpic fruit it's very important remember the definition what is parthenocarpic fruit the parthenocarpic fruit that means the fruit which develops without fertilization without okay so without fertilization fruit which is going to be produced that's called as a parthenocarpic fruit like for an example banana banana is an example of a parthenocarpic fruit and this parthenocarpic fruit are seedless fruit okay you can see here, the banana doesn't have a seeds because here it is produced without fertilization and as it pro the process occurs without fertilization seed is not going to be formed and such type of fruit are called parthenocarpic fruit like what happens in the case of an banana okay you can also induces this parthenocarpy into a fruit by application of hormones okay the hormones can induces parthenocarpy into a flower okay or fruit okay and this is called as parthenocarpy okay so what is a parthenocarpic fruit the parthenocarpic fruit that means a fruit which develops without fertilization this is called as parthenocarpic fruit okay next so just see how many types of fruit true fruit dry fruit 
sorry fleshy fruit dry fruit fleshy fruit the inner component is fleshy in dry fruit it is inner component is dry it's again another classification true and false fruit true fruit develops from ovary false fruit it develops from other than ovary but both are the result of fertilization there is few uh, there are few exceptions in which the fruit is produced without fertilization and that is called as parthenocarpic fruit like seen in a banana next next if you see a seed the seed is a benefit to an angiospermic plant the seed provides a uh, advantages or benefit to an angiosperm or to flowering plants what are the kind of advantages that is provided by the seed once the seed is produced what kind of the advantages that is going to be provided by it first advantage that is to a flowering plant or angiosperm by formation of a seed what is the first advantage of it see first advantage is it it can be this you know that in a plant two kind of a processes usually happens that's a pollination and the second one is fertilization you know the meaning of pollination pollination means a transfer of uh, pollen grain from anther to a stigma whether it's the same flower or another flower okay and the fertilization means it's a fusion of gametes where the male and female gamete that fuse together see both are the processes they are the chance reaction the pollen grain that is going to be transferred to a stigma and reach to a specific plant it's a chance it is not guaranteed it will only go to this specific plant can anyone guarantee is a pollen grain fly from this and fall on this it's not like a physics okay, it will go in this direction and fall on this angle it's not like this it depends on the certain biotic and abiotic factors who will carry them apart from that the fertilization the fusion once the gametes are formed that doesn't mean it gets a fused and fertilization process occurs because the fertilization occurs at two sites Uh, outside the body as well as inside the body what we call it as external fertilization and internal fertilization respectively means it is a chance reaction both are pollination and fertilization but once the seed is going to be formed so from that there is very high probability that a new plant is going to be developed okay so there is not a chance it is not dependable reaction okay so this is what happens in the case of formation of a seed and that is an advantage to a angiosperm or a flowering plants okay second advantage you know that the pollination or the pollen grain can be transferred to anywhere but the see the plant adopt a different mechanism for dispersal of seed dispersal means releases the seed plant has a different mechanism for dispersal of a seed and due to a dispersal of a seed or different mechanism of dispersal of seed the seed may go to a different location or geography and that's why there is a better chances of development of a new plant from it and this is called as uh, advantage to a angiosperm plant or the flowering plant apart from that the seed you know that seed contains a small amount of a food this food is providing a nutrition to a, a embryo which is present inside it so until from seed a plant develops or plant germinate and the leaf are produced and they become a photosynthetic until then they also need a nutrition and that nutrition is provided by the nutrition which is present in seed itself means for nutrition it doesn't have to look after the other okay so that is an advantage okay next apart from that the seed is covered by a seed coat usually the seed coat is a hard and tough okay and that is when the seed coat is a hard and tough it provides a protection to a developing embryo which is present in it means the embryo becomes a protective and it's a seed that is formed by the fusion of male and female gamete okay or you can say a microspore and megaspore that is fused together and lead, that leads to a formation of an seed okay there is a fertilization and that leads to a production of a seed so chances are that there are chances of great variation because it's a result of sexual reproduction and you know that in sexual reproduction the chances of improvement are high okay so these are the five advantages to a plant or flowering plants who produces the seed first first advantage the pollination and fertilization they are 
some water independent processes but here that seed formation is a dependable processes second one second advantage is that the plant develop or adapt a different mechanism for dispersal of seeds and so that's why they can better grow third there is a presence of a food which is present inside it so it doesn't have to depend on the other for food requirement until they become a photosynthetic fourth the seed is covered by seed coat means they are protected the embryo which is present in it it is well protected and fourth the seed is a result of sexual reproduction hence there is more chances of variation and more chances of improvement in characters okay so this is advantages of seed in angiosperm plant okay next usually what happens once the seed is produced it is dispersed next two kind of a processes occurs one is called as dehydration what we call it as loss of water and the seed becomes a mature and once there is a dehydration the seed becomes a dormant so these are the two characteristic of a seed dehydration and dormancy and by which the seed becomes a mature clear now if to this if you provide a proper condition like oxygen temperature sunlight you know the basic requirements for growth of a plant if you provide such good conditions to this seed from this seed seed will germinate and new plant is going to be produced okay otherwise they can remain a dormant dormant means it is living but it is inactive and how much time after the seed is going to be released from a fruit for how much time the seed can remain a viable once it is liberated from plant or it gets separated from a plant for how much time uh, you can uh, this seed can remain a dormant and again can germinate we have a two example you have to remember first example is lupine so lupine the scientific name is lupinus Articus Okay the scientific name is Lupinus articus the seed of this plant lupine or lupinus articus that proof shows that the seed of this plant that remains dormant for 10000 years Okay that remains as such for 10000 years and after 10000 years that seed has flower and produced a new plant and this is a record lupin lupinus articus okay that was found in a arctic tundra uh, found at arctic tundra this is a location okay where it was found okay so you have to remember this example this plant uh, seed of this plant has flower and produced a new plant even after 10000 years of that means that seed remains a dormant for 10000 years when it gets a proper condition of oxygen temperature light water then again the germinate okay which was found at arctic tundra that is important in the mcq point of view okay or examination point of view next another recent seed was found which was also remained a long period that is of seed of a date palm okay and that remains active for 2000 year sorry dormant that remains dormant for 2000 years okay a date palm see okay and that was found at the king herod's palace while excavation or archaeological excavation this sea was found and we are capable of producing a new plant from this sea okay these are the two examples that means a seed can remain viable for certain time period for some seed it may be few years in some seed it may be few decades in some seed it may be few centuries even more than that okay that can remain a viable okay so you will remember this two example so today we have seen a seed a part of a product which is formed by a fertilization of an ovule okay now only just two law topics have been left apomixis and polyembryonic afterwards we will finish the chapter and then we will do a revision okay so till then keep watching keep learning like and subscribe this